Alright, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So, part 2 of Global's 6th anniversary celebration is about to start in about 2 days from now on July 19th at 8pm Eastern Time or 5pm Pacific Time. And in this video, I want to give you guys a quick preview of everything that we can expect to get over the next couple of weeks from the new units to the awakenings, the new events obviously, the banners, and so on and so forth to get you guys fully prepared. Alright, so with all that said, let's just jump right into it. Obviously, we're looking at the details for JP celebration, but globals will be very, very similar. And uh, scrolling down here, it says Dokkan's 6th anniversary celebration part 2 is now on. In part 2, a new Extreme Z battle and new event stages have arrived. In addition, there will be a co-op campaign to challenge with friends as well as a legendary summon. Let's play with Dokkan for the transcendent, luxurious 6th anniversary. Okay, so obviously we will be getting more missions for some stones, some Kai's, and also some more of the 66 summon tickets, some more rainbow tickets, and also the regular 6th anniversary tickets as well. Oh, and of course we'll also be getting uh, more anniversary coins too. And by the way, these rainbow tickets, the tons of thanks tickets, will become usable in part 2 once the top legendary summon banner drops. And they can be used to summon on any of the anniversary banners, whether it be the Goku banner, Vegeta banner, or the uh, top legendary summon banner. Alright, so those are the missions. And then we have some new stages for these two story events, the Miracle of Universe 7 and also Master Roshi's new challenge. And uh, these new stages will allow us to get the medals to Dokkan Awaken, the Roshi and Tien, the Krillin and 18, and also the uh, LR Master Roshi. And then from there we're getting a new Extreme Z battle for the Int Ultra Instinct Goku. Obviously not really a surprise at this point, but it was a huge shock back in the day when nobody was uh, expecting this, you know. And that's going to be dropping at the same time as the new stages for the story events. And from there, we have some new stages for the Gods of Destruction event, with four new gods to take on, with four more on the way in part 3. And we're also going to be getting a new stage for Infinite Dragon Ball History versus uh, Reps of Universe 7. And of course, we'll take a closer look at all of these events in a second. Right now, we're just doing a quick preview, a quick uh, overview of everything. And after that, there's going to be a new community or co-op campaign. It's going to be very similar to the uh, Rebrian one we got in part 1. So we're going to be working as teams, trying to complete missions or, you know, reach milestones and getting rewards based on our uh, performance, I guess, right? So some stones, some Kai's, training items, keys, um, coins, orbs, and so on and so forth. So there's that. And then of course, the part 2 banner, the top legendary summon banner featuring the LR Android 17 slash Team Universe 7 and also Golden Frieza and uh, Android 17. And this banner is not dropping actually until about a week after part 2 starts. So since part 2 is starting on the 19th, I would say we can expect this banner to come out on the 26th. I guess 25th, 26th, depending on your time zone. So well, we got some time before we have to, you know, spend more stones. If you do choose to summon, obviously. And there's going to be some Dragonstone sales, pretty standard stuff. And the one thing that's missing here that we are definitely going to be getting on Global for Part 2 is a new Peton Battle with the Series 2 stickers. So for any Peton Battle fans out there, which I know there's a lot, that's going to be pretty awesome. So uh, that is a quick overview of the events that we'll be getting in part two. Now let's pop over to the individual pages and take a closer look. So here we go. Starting with the Miracle of Universe 7 event, we're going to be getting stages, let's see, uh, 5 to 10. So right now we only have 1 to 4, right? So for stages 5 to 10, we're going to basically be able to get the Dokkan Awakening medals for all the free-to-play units. So for level 5, it's the Roshi and Tien medals. Level 6 is Krillin and 18 medals. Level 7 is actually for the support memory for 18 and 17. And this support memory uh, recovers 18% HP. And siblings bond category allies attack and defense plus 18% for one turn. 
when HP is 50% or less once only. And just like the other support memory, you just have to keep running the stage until you get 100 uh, pieces or fragments, and then it'll be complete, and then you can use it in uh, your runs, right? And then for stage 9, we'll be able to get the Token Awakening medals for the Fizz uh, Ultra Instinct Goku. So yeah, that is the Universe 7 event. And then moving on to the Master Roshi event, we'll be getting uh, three new stages, four to six. So on stage six, we'll be able to get the uh, LR Awakening medals for Master Roshi to get him from TUR to LR status. And uh, that is pretty much it. So some more stones, obviously, for each stage. And now moving on to the Extreme Z battle for the Int Ultra Instinct Goku. That's going to be dropping on the 19th. And the weakness is the Rapid Growth category. And just taking a quick look at this event. So we're going to be getting one stone for every single stage, up to 30. Some Int Orbs. Of course, the Extreme Z Awakening medals for Goku. After level 4, he gets additional damage reduction of 70% against tech types. After level 9, SSR or lower rarity characters can only cause less than 2 million damage. After level 12, additional damage reduction of 80% against AGL and tech types. And then after level... Oh, that's it. Okay, so I thought there was going to be another, you know, damage reduction stage, but... No, so just make sure you don't run any AGL or tech types. And uh, you should be good, of course. Bring as many rapid growth as you can. Ideally, a full rapid growth team would be the best, right? So uh, yeah, that is the UI Goku Extreme Z battle. And then for the Gods of Destruction event, as I said, we're getting four more. So that would be levels uh, five to eight. So for level five, we're getting a Rock Universe 5's God of Destruction. He's going to be an int type. And then on level six, we're facing Champa. Universe 6's God of Destruction, who's Super AGL. And then on level 7, it's Beerus, obviously Universe 7's God of Destruction. And he apparently is one of, if not the hardest boss in this entire event, because he first of all changes types, which is kind of annoying, but also he has a rage mechanic. And I heard there were some other reasons why. Oh, he also can evade attacks, which is kind of annoying, so... Uh, this will be a fun challenge, definitely looking forward to taking down Beerus. And then for level 8, we have Le Lecure? Le Lecure? I don't know how to say his name, but yeah, Lecure, Lecure, Universe 8, God of Destruction, who's super tech. And uh, that's going to be it for part 2. Obviously for part 3, we got the remaining Gods of Destruction. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how many tries it takes us to beat each of them i thought the part one gods weren't too bad the only one that gave me a lot of trouble or took me multiple tries was uh quitella i think everybody else took me like two tries at most so uh yeah looking forward to it now jumping over to the infinite dragon ball history stage it's going to be level 12 or it might be a different number actually on global but either way it's going to be the warriors of universe 7 stage and it's gonna be nine phases we got krillin as the first boss and then tien roshi piccolo 18 ultimate gohan ssb vegeta 17 and finally goku and frieza as the final boss and for the missions in terms of the characters you have to bring to complete them you need to have at least three universe 6 category characters and three universe 11 category characters you could do them separately or do them on the same team, really up to you. Or if you don't care about this, then you can just do any team you want, right? It's really uh, a matter of whether you want these four stones or not. But uh, yeah, that is going to be the new Infinite Dragon Ball History stage. And then we have the new Peton Battle, which is actually dropping about a week after Part 2 starts, from what I've heard. So probably around the same time as the uh, top Legendary Summon Banner. And just taking a quick look at the Series 2 cards. In yesterday's video, I said that we were getting 26 new cards or stickers, but clearly my math was off because I was really tired. It's actually more like 36 stickers. Okay, so that's my bad. I'm oh, sorry, 37 stickers. 37 stickers. It says right here, 37. So, uh, yeah, going down to where Series 2 starts, we got the LR Trunk sticker, LR Androids, Goku... 
Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna, you know, name every single one, but you guys can see what they are. Future Gohan, Piccolo, a couple of Tapions, uh, more Androids, Bad Man Vegeta, really want this one. And uh, yeah, that is Series 2. So look forward to collecting those. Pet on Battle has easily become one of my favorite modes in the entire game. So I definitely can't wait to uh, start collecting these again. But uh, that is going to do it for all the new events that we're going to be getting in Part 2. Uh, just a quick overview. We have the uh, new stages for the Universe 7 event. Uh, new stages for the Roshi event. Obviously Awakenings with each one. Extreme Z Battle for Goku. Four new Gods of Destruction, uh, Infinite Dragon Ball History Stage, Peton Battle, and that's it. Now taking a quick look at the top Legendary Summon Banner, once again, not coming out when Part 2 starts, but rather about a week after. The two new featured LRs are the LR Android 17 slash Team Universe 7, and also Golden Frieza and 17. And these are the remaining featured units, and uh, I mean... You got a couple of usable ones, you know, like some of them are okay once you awaken them or Extreme Z awaken them, but overall, it's a really bad banner, guys. Okay, I'm I'm just going to say it right now. It's probably not one that a lot of people want to go too deep on, um, even if you really want these two LRs. And yes, it does feature two LRs, so it is better than your average Legendary Summon banner, but nonetheless, not a great banner. Not a great banner. Of course, it will have all of the other LRs in the game, the non Dokkan Fest LRs, that is. So you always have a chance to pull one of them, but nonetheless, my opinion on the banner still stands. And uh, we got the rainbow ticket, which can be used for the top legendary summon banner. So instead of using real stones, you could just test your luck with the tickets. And uh, now we're going to do a quick overview of all of the units slash awakenings, starting with the LRs and then also the free to play units as well. So if you guys, uh, you know, want to know what they do or you don't know what they do, then keep watching. But if you guys already have a good idea of what these guys are all about, then you can just stop watching the video at this point. All right. So starting with the int LR Android 17 slash Team Universe 7, their leader skill is reps of Universe 7, key plus 4, HP, attack, and defense plus 150%, or uh, int types, super int types, key plus 4, HP, attack, and defense plus 100%, 12 key super attack, greatly raises attack for one turn, and causes colossal damage, and then raises allies defense by 30% for one turn, 18 key super, causes mega colossal damage, raises allies defense by 30%, and chance of performing a critical hit by 7% for one turn, Passive is attack and defense plus 70% plus an additional attack and defense plus 70% when there are 5 or more reps of Universe 7 category allies on the team plus an additional attack plus 70% when key is 22 or more and then key plus 2 in addition per rainbow key sphere obtained chance of performing a critical hit plus 7% per rainbow key sphere obtained. Active skill, all out attack of Universe 7 can be activated when there are five or more reps of Universe 7 category allies on the team and another two reps of Universe 7 category allies attacking in the same turn when facing only one enemy whose HP is 50% or less once only and it greatly raises attack temporarily, causes ultimate damage and all allies keep plus seven for one turn. Links are Android Assault, Infinite Energy, Solid Support, Shocking Speed, Tournament of Power, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. And categories are Universe Survival Saga, Reps of Universe 7, and Joined Forces. And in terms of the way their passive is calculated, their additional attack plus 70% is calculated separately for a total attack boost of attack plus 189% when key is 22 or more, and then attack plus 308% if there are five or more reps of Universe 7 category allies on the team. So needless to say, this unit hits very, very hard. They're just um, kind of limited in terms of where you can put them to get the most out of them, because obviously you want to have them on a full reps of Universe 7 team to ensure that they always have their full passive you know, available and also be able to use this active skill as uh, often as possible. 
So that is the LR reps of Universe 7 or Team Universe 7. And then we have the Golden Frieza or Angel Golden Frieza in Android 17. Leader skill is Universe Survival Saga or Join Forces Category Key plus 3. HP attack and defense plus 150%. Super attack greatly raises attack for one turn, causes colossal damage, and then 18 key super raises attack for one turn, causes mega colossal damage, and lowers attack and defense. Passive attack and defense plus 70%, great chance of launching up to two additional attacks, plus an additional attack and defense plus 7% up to 70%, and key plus one up to seven with each attack performed, reduces damage received and raises chance of performing a critical hit by 7% with each attack performed within the same turn. Active skill can be activated after performing 4 or more super attacks during battle and it gives them key plus 7 and defense plus 77% and performs guaranteed critical hits for one turn. Links are tough as nails, brainiacs, solid support, shocking speed, tournament of power, fierce battle, and legendary power, and categories are universe survival saga, reps, of Universe 7, Joint Forces, and Battle of Wits. And their additional attack and defense boost of 7% with each attack performed is calculated separately for a total boost of attack and defense plus 189% after 10 attacks. And their active skill is also calculated separately for a maximum possible boost of defense plus 411.53% with this 77% uh, boost on the active skill. So. That is the Golden Frieza and Android 17. And now we're going to talk about the Awakenings, the Extreme Z Awakening, as well as the Dokken Awakenings for the other free to play units. So, starting with Goku here, leader skill is going to be Realm of Gods, category Q plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 160%, or Int type Q plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 100%. Super attack raises attack and defense and causes immense damage. And passive is attack and defense plus 150%. Awakens when HP is 50% or less. And then once you awaken, the super attack is still raises attack and defense and causes immense damage. But the passive is key plus 3, attack plus 200%, and defense plus 100%. Great chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, disables enemies' guard, and evades enemies' attack, including super attack, for one turn after awakening. And his stats are pretty insane man once he is rainbowed fully extreme z awakened he gets 18,550 hp 20,280 attack which is actually i think higher than the int lr ssb vegeta i might be wrong it might be close but yeah that's a really high attack stat man and then defense is 12,723 so absolutely monstrous easy a for the int ui goku and then we have the Tien and Roshi, who are not getting their Extreme Z Awakenings until Part 3, so keep that in mind. Same thing for the Krillin and 18, same thing for the UI Goku, and same thing for the Master Roshi. So in this video, we'll just be covering their Dokken Awakening details, but not their Extreme Z Awakening details yet, since that doesn't happen until Part 3 starts. So, starting with the Roshi and 18, or sorry, uh, Roshi and Tien, Leader skill, Earthlings category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 50%, super attack supreme damage, and lowers attack and defense. Passive is attack and defense plus 40%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 10% with each attack received up to 40%, and reps of universe 7 category allies key plus 1, attack and defense plus 20%. Links are experienced fighters, brainiacs, tough as nails, cold judgment, solid support, tournament of power, and shattering the limit, and categories are universe survival saga, Reps of Universe 7, Joint Forces, Earthlings, and Battle of Wits. Now moving on to the 18 and Krillin. Leader skill, Joint Forces, Category Q plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 50%, Super Attack, Raises Attack, Causes Supreme Damage, Passive, Changes Fizz Key Spheres to Int Key Spheres at the start of the turn, Launches an additional Super Attack with 6 or more Int Key Spheres obtained, Attack and defense plus 20% with each attack performed, up to 100%. Links, Experienced Fighters, Courage, Cold Judgment, Brainiacs, Solace Support, Turn of Power, and Shattering the Limit, and Categories are Universe Survival Saga, Reps of Universe 7, Joint Forces, and Battle of Wits. And then we have the Fizz UI Goku, Leader Skill, Universe Survival Saga, Key Plus 2, HP Attack and Defense, plus 50%, Super Attack, Supreme Damage, 
Passive is Universe Survival Saga Category Allies, key plus 3, and Attack and Defense, plus 80%, Lynx, Kamehameha, Prepare for Battle, Experience Fighters, Godly Power, Tournament of Power, First Awakened, and Shattering the Limit. And categories are Universe Survival Saga, Realm of Gods, Pure Saiyans, Reps of Universe 7, Goku's Family, Kamehameha, Turtle School, Miraculous Awakening, and Powerful Comeback. And finally, we have the LR Master Roshi. Leader skill is Turtle School, key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 80%. Super attack, 12 key, massively raises attack for one turn and causes colossal damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. And the 18 key raises attack and defense by 628% for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. His passive is defense plus 100% and medium chance of evading enemies attacks, including super attack, turtle school, category allies, key plus 2, attack and defense plus 30%, if HP is 50% or less at the start of character's attacking turn, and there are another 2 or more turtle school category allies on the team, revives with 50% HP recovered, when the character or an ally attacking on the same turn is KO'd once only, so revival skill, and then active skill can be activated after the character receives attacks 7 or more times in battle, and there is another Turtle School category ally attacking on the same turn, and it massively raises attack temporarily, causes ultimate damage, and all allies keep plus 7 for one turn. His links are Turtle School, Kamehameha, Supreme Warrior, Brainiacs, Tournament of Power, Shattering the Limit, and Legendary Power. And categories are Universe Survival Saga, Full Power, Reps, of Universe 7, Kamehameha, Bond of Master and Disciple, Final Trump Card, Earthlings, All Out Struggle, Battle of Wits, Turtle School, and Powerful Comeback. And that is the Biz LR Master Roshi before his Extreme Z Awakening. And now we can jump back to the very start, and that's gonna cover the 6th Anniversary Part 2, guys. So look forward to it in about two days from now, like I said, on July 19th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Your boy Tiger will definitely be streaming at that time to do as many of the new events as uh, we possibly can. So uh, definitely tune in if you guys are available at that time. But uh, yeah, there you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video uh, helped some of you guys out there just to get a little bit better prepared for the second part. And uh, that's all I gotta say, man. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here until next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.